It's astounding. We've just witnessed an epic moment from the static fire test of Ship 30 at the launch site at Starbase. However, this could be the last test conducted at this location. SpaceX has completed the construction of a new testing infrastructure to prepare for future Starship static fire tests. What is it? How does it work? And why did SpaceX decide to move the static fire tests away from the launch site? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Before we delve into the new test stand at Massey, let's congratulate SpaceX on the successful static fire test on May 9th of Ship 30, burning six Raptor engines for six seconds. The brilliant golden fire emitted from the Raptors created a spectacular scene, full of power as if the Earth itself were opening gates to paradise. This was captured in the video released by SpaceX immediately following the test. Static fire of Flight 5 Starship 6 Raptor engines. SpaceX did not report any further issues from this test, indicating that the fueling and engine reignition process proceeded as planned without any notable concerns. A relatively clean test further instills confidence in SpaceX's ongoing upgrades to each Starship prototype over time. The main character is Ship 30, which has previously undergone two successful cryogenic tests. If everything goes according to plan, Ship 30 will then undergo an extensive engine test campaign similar to the one conducted on Ship 29, including a spin prime test, static fire tests, and a single static fire engine test. However, what's unique is that Ship 30 has been launched with engine covers, making it the first Starship to feature this. Therefore, starting from Ship 30, SpaceX may skip the spin prime test for its Phase 2 spacecraft. The first engine cover's equipped booster is Booster 10, which also skipped the spin prime test. With Ship 30 on the pad, some changes have already been observed. Firstly, two new roll thrusters have been added just above the forward dome. They sit alongside the new patch antennas, an upgrade from Ship 29, replacing the six tile-shaped antennas that were previously on the nose cone. Additionally, Ship 30 now has a new liquid oxygen vent hole at the top of the liquid oxygen tank. This vent hole appears to include a sensor with sensing lines leading into the tank as well as a pressure relief valve. These upgrades could improve monitoring and control of pressure within the tank, ensuring safer and more efficient fuel storage. Finally, Ship 30 will serve as the prototype for the fifth Starship flight, and if the current ship and booster combination continues, it may fly with Booster 12. I can't wait to see this Starship in operation, and I guess you all feel the same way as me, right? Ship 30's test schedule is expected to resume soon, perhaps with another test with only one Raptor engine in the coming days. However, according to the speculation of many experts in the field, the static fire of Ship 30 could be the final static fire we witnessed from the launch pad, marking the end of an era. This prediction is not unfounded, as we can see SpaceX engineers are busy with a new component of the rocket testing system. Recently, on May 7th, a new static fire test stand originating from Massey embarked on a journey to the production facility to select a Starship for testing. And none other than Ship 26 was chosen. It was swiftly hoisted onto the stand and transported to Massey overnight on May 8th. Take a look at this stage's design. It's significantly different from anything we've seen before at Starbase. It's truly massive and has four legs resembling a spider or a future robot. However, the challenge lies in how to precisely position both the test stand and the sliding ship in the flame trench for testing, which remains a mystery that we can only see unfold when Ship 26 gets to Massey. As far as my understanding goes, the testing infrastructure at Massey has long been mobile, allowing equipment like ship test stands to be easily transported to the high bay, where prototypes are placed on top of them. But with this new giant stand, SpaceX will undoubtedly need to set up specialized cranes and lifting equipment. If they haven't prepared these resources, the simplest way to conduct a static fire test with Ship 26 would be to lift each component into place. This time, if you find this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe to get more notifications about our new videos every day. It's not known whether SpaceX will immediately test Ship 26 or not, but to talk about the current fire-free situation, it is almost complete. It's impressive to see how big it is. The flame trench is a trench dug beneath the launch pad to contain heat and smoke exhaust from the rocket engines. It consists of a deflector portion that redirects the flames horizontally, deflecting the combustion products before dispersing them into the surrounding environment. This process minimizes noise, heat, and debris deviation from the rocket as well as its surroundings. Additionally, the flame trench helps reduce the damage caused by static electric fires. The flame trench at Massey is undergoing final preparations to become operational.
The containment area adjacent to the flame trench features a methane farm, including at least one vertical CH4 tank and two auxiliary cooling units. Additionally, there is a floodwater containment farm consisting of three large horizontal tanks and what is believed to be an accompanying sprinkler system. The tank farm has been integrated with the existing pipeline system to provide fuel for the engines. The water tanks are also ready to supply water for the trench system. Other components serving the test event have been meticulously prepared by SpaceX workers, awaiting the arrival of a prototype to undergo testing. In addition to the flame trench, there is also a stand for the ship to sit on, which will allow the ship to roll on and roll off the trench without the need for a crane at the outpost to lift ships. This will be the most novel image at Starbase. If you've been following SpaceX since the early days of their Starship program, then you surely know that Elon Musk originally didn't want to build any flame diverter for Starship at Starbase. Instead, they constructed a giant and unique launch pad and launch tower unlike anyone else's. And the thick steel plates with numerous small holes connected to the main water pipes are what will replace the function of a traditional flame trench. So the question arises, why have SpaceX and Elon Musk only now built this traditional method for Starship? What's their purpose? Well, the decision not to build a flame trench at the launch site is a sensible one. In fact, at the Boca Chica coastline, the groundwater level is only a few meters below the ground surface. This means that as soon as you start digging a pit, water will flow into it, causing all sorts of difficulties for your construction. And if SpaceX were to create a flame trench, they would have to build an artificial hill to contain it. On the other hand, SpaceX doesn't have the time and money NASA does to access, and everything they do reflects a supply shortage. However, the Massey area is different, located far to the southwest end of Starbase, away from the Boca Chica coastline. Previously, it was a shooting range SpaceX acquired in 2021. With its particularly advantageous location and relatively low groundwater level, it provides ideal conditions for all of SpaceX's construction activities. Therefore, this test facility is an ideal place to build a dedicated flame trench for testing giant spacecraft. At a meeting exclusively for invitees in Brownsville in December 2023, Kathy Luters, director of Starbase at SpaceX, publicly confirmed that SpaceX intends to move most of its static fire and cryogenic testing campaigns to this location in the near future. This will free up launch sites to focus primarily on actual launch operations. Indeed, this is a decisive shift for SpaceX. Concentrating testing activities at one point offers several advantages for SpaceX. Firstly, it enhances safety. Static fires and cryo testing involve highly flammable propellants, and relocating them off-site reduces the risk to launch pads. Secondly, with testing occurring at a separate site, the main launch pads can remain active for actual launch operations concurrently. This helps SpaceX increase its mission cadence, separating a potential bottleneck from the launch capability. Lastly, dedicating a separate site specifically for testing allows SpaceX to optimize the facility for those functions, rather than having to set up and dismantle test equipment at the launch site. In summary, there are still many exciting developments ahead. The introduction of the new static fire test stand and flame trench system is extremely positive, but it'll take time to ramp up until it operates stably. Ship 26 is the first prototype to test this new infrastructure. Once Ship 26 is successfully tested, this facility can accommodate all future starships. However, remember that the flame trench at Massey is only for Phase 2 starships. With the scale and power of the Super Heavy, this new infrastructure could be blown away in an instant. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.